Hi, everybody, and welcome to Larry C.'s Attacking Handbook, Chess Handbook, that is. And, uh, of course, ch handbooks have been around in the chess world ever since the 1840s, uh, notably Bilger's Handbook, I think it was called, um, famous treatise from way back, very thick volume. And, uh, well, we'll try to see what we can do to, to uh, com rival... Herr Bilger's effort. Now, although he, I think his general, his book was uh, about all general features of the game. We're going to focus mainly on attack, tactics, uh, mating attacks, how to basically take out the enemy king. That's We're, we're headhunters in this show. And, uh, so to, and this is really geared towards players roughly... 1400 to 2000 maybe a little above I think though that a lot of players can benefit uh, at all levels can benefit from what we talk about here and we're going to just have a fun discussion about how to go after the enemy king now we're going to start off with a example from way back 1972 way before Anatoly Karpov was a household name in the chess world and um this is a exa good example, a very basic example of how to take out the uh, enemy king position. And let's first of all discuss this position. This is um, a Sicilian gone wrong, at least from Black's perspective. He has a knight on b4, knight on the edge, not doing much. His king side looks rather porous and weakly defended. The only direct defender of his king's side is that dark square bishop on e7. The rest, the rest of his forces are concentrated on the queen side. I'm not even sure no black knew what he was doing with putting, piling up his major pieces um, in, in this fashion. White, on the other hand, has a phenomenal formation. He has active, well-placed bishops, the artillery, the rooks, are supporting um, some advanced foot soldiers that are ready to bust open. That's what pawns do. They're good at blasting holes in the enemy position. They're stormers. And uh, this is a, here in this case, these far advanced pawns are ready to roll. Pawns like to be pushed in general. Uh, and in support, we have a, also well-placed queen. She's a very, very important part of any attack. Successful mating attack most of the time, very important. White's got an ideal king position, tucked away, away from checks. And the knights are, even the knight on b3, which appears to be lagging in uh, activity, has access to squares like c5 or d4, very usefully positioned. And the knight on c3 is also well placed. Now, what's the first move when you look at a position like this? You should always be looking at the most violent, first moves first, violent forcing moves you can find that make any sense whatsoever. I'm talking checks, captures, moves with direct threats, decisive threats, winning, uh, you know, exchange, peace, or even a pawn. Um, in this position, what are the forcing moves? Well, we would not be looking too deeply at moves like, but there are no checks on the, bo on the board. There are no heavy captures either. So what would we, we'd be looking at moves like bishop takes e6, certainly. No, I wouldn't look at knight takes d5. That would just he simply help black, obviously. Useless move. Um, other forcing moves would include actually f5. That's a move that comes with a lot of, uh, it seems well backed up. It does, though, offer a pawn for uh, compensation that is really not quite that evident unless you could take into account all the factors behind it. Now, first of all, if I, I would look at bishop takes e6. Well, what's the follow-up? Well, the obvious follow-up would then be to, to punch forward with f5. And uh, well, we can see that this looks interesting, especially if black plays e takes f5, e6, and our bishop on d4 comes to life. 
But after G takes out five, now Black's King is shivering in the cold, but uh, but has no apparent way to uh, make further progress. I would say, though, I would venture to say after a move like Queen H6, Black is still has his work cut out for him holding this position. But why risk anything when you have the much more promising continuation F5 available and that is indeed the move Karpov played and I am quite convinced he may have analyzed a variation or two but just the general preponderance of force in the kingside sector plus the damaged formation Black is suffering from indicate that this move you don't even need to calculate specifics you, in general you know this is going to be good okay first of all it has a mortal threat of f takes e6 total meltdown of the black king side black must take and also f6 is a wedge move type move that is extremely dangerous as well for instance if black tries to hold e6 why just pushes forward and suddenly queen h6 with a mating net is uh, there's no way to meet it the black must take must take with the G pawn I mean E pawn looks uh, very bad on account of E6 uh, appearing in the mix so he's got to try G takes out five of course now the king is fully exposed increasingly exposed what do we do now yes you sack and I venture to say uh, without even calculating here I'll bet you rook takes f5 is also quite sound here so much force behind it if e takes f5 let her rip e6 oh let's take the bishop but now everything is the bishop on e7 is real key to the city here uh, the, as the bishop goes so it goes queen g5 check the, the dark spurs evaporate so obviously this is a very sound powerful sack as well um, but not quite as forceful as bishop takes f5 uh, which is comes with uh, some more punch behind it now white black is suffering from queen h6 there's rook lefts available always a very handy attacking device rook lifts are just hugely uh, important tactical theme Okay, so what happens if he takes? Yeah, there goes e6 again. Well, what about f takes e6? Well, then rook takes e6. Threats are just everywhere. f5 is also uh, under assault. If black tries to defend with rook e8, what else? Here comes the queen, h6, and black is quickly getting overloaded. Let's say he tries to defend bishop f8. Always look at those violent forcing moves. And here's one that wins instantly rook g6 check and mate or king f7 queen takes h7 check followed by mate the, co the cheap combinations just flow when you have a position like this so here mr kobo kobo artiaga tries to hold hold on with knight f8 and look at this massive force this is a very basic example of how to attack a weakened king side Karpov swoops in with the queen now he's planning a rook lift perhaps bishop h7 knight takes and rook takes f7 as well that looks rather promising what can black do well e takes f5 obviously gets destroyed by f5 f6 Rook takes, and our old friend, the Rook G5 check, uh, starts to, uh, is, is unstoppable. Black tried Knight G6, and also this following type of combo is very, very important. What does Karpov do here? He eliminates the key defender, HG, and... Yes, you would look at rook takes f7, which actually is crushing, but only, but not if you're Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious would check the king away, 
and things are kind of sticky. But uh, very, very strong is Knight C5. Now, what does Knight C5 do? do? It takes out the exit square D7. And if black put, tries bishop takes C5, well then, black well, key defender has been diverted and white quickly developed uh, forces mate. We have rook f1 check, king e8, bishop takes, he can run, he, not, not for long. Rook d8, and now what do you do here? Well, black's heading for the exits. Very important part of attack is blocking the exits, taking out the exit. You'll see this time and time again in our coming examples. Prevent that enemy king from fleeing and then deliver the big check. Not the big check first. That lets him escape. Okay. <clears throat> so Rook F7 would have won. Karpov, the very uh, methodical, goes with Rook E3. Take, uh, a little extra time at the board with Rook takes F7. And here Kobo gets a brief lease on life, bishop f8, queen h4 of course, now rook h3 is the plan, there's no stopping it, so we'll he tries to organize some defense, here comes check and g6 is on the menu he tries to defend here and Karpov might have considered knight c5 first, but uh, which takes aim at e6 but he went this way, also very effective, f6, and here, after, this is, you can't even call that a sacrifice, and here, after rook, the destroying move, rook takes f6, check, Kobo Atiaga resign. Very basic uh, example, and I mean, I hope you're not afraid to play moves like f4, f5. It's a no-brainer. Okay, our next example is a very nice little attacking game from A to Z. We're going to start off. It's a popular opening. Roy Lopez. This is the Berlin Wall variation. And White trains his forces at the king side. There they go. This knight's headed for d5 if allowed. So here Black could have considered c6 uh, to keep that knight at bay, but instead plays bishop f6. And yes, you would calculate bishop takes h7 check, but it doesn't quite uh, amount to anything better to retreat. And by the way, rook e3 is interesting as well. And now Black is confronted with knight d5. What does he do? He keeps him out. But that sets up possibilities on this diagonal. All the while, of course, White is looking lustfully at that h7 area. Not working yet, but uh, we're getting there. So he plays b3 to activate. Black tries to trade some pieces. White uh, develops and attacks. That's always a uh, good combination. So he already Black is in serious trouble. I think knight takes e5 uh, was a bit, was probably a bit off. So takes, takes, and now he retreats. And here we have a uh, white has lots of uh, weapons at his disposal. Still no bishop h7 checks yet. Time to get fully mobilized. What does he do? He plays queen e4 hitting h, h7. Planning, of course, rook e1 now. Black has to meet the threat. Here comes rook e1. Full mobilization. But you got to do something with it. And black tries to defend. There's nothing else to look at. Knight c7 is rather dismal. And by the way, white can then sit on um, on the d7 pawn, keeping black's forces from uh, joining the fight. So here, Zaberski tries knight g7. Uh, not usually a good idea to fianchetto your knights. Rooks and knights are not designed to be fianchetto. Okay, but now you have White has this very promising formation, but we have to put him away. So White looks at his available assets. Um, the only one that's sort of underperforming is the knight on c3. And if it could go to e4, that would make the attack that much more potent. Okay, the obvious move here would be queen f4. 
to uh, make way for the knight on e c3 to go to e4. But black can then answer with d5, and that complicates the issue very much. So uh, Webb here, there's also bishop d6 available to keep black bottled up. And that's indeed what he does. That's far better move than something lackadaisical like queen f4 or queen f3, letting black get to climb back undeservedly into the game. Bishop d6, very typical and very strong move, keeps the rook and bishop out of play for a long period of time. So now black is basically playing that which his knight has got to come to the rescue. So he tries knight g7. What happens on knight f5? Well, then queen e8 check. So he's got to go knight e6, nothing better. Now white has to soften him up in another way. To get at him, let's use the pawn. And by the way, white makes loof at the same time. So f5 is now a monster threat. And the, But what about check now in f5? That's a good question. What happens on bishop d4 check, king h1, f5? Now, when it, that happens, that's a major weakening of black's king formation. White can just simply crawl, crawl back, and suddenly black is confronted with ideas like uh, g4, bishop takes f5, um, bishop c4, all 92, all very promising uh, ideas here. That'd be a stop cap gap defense. Zabersky tries bishop e7 now and to he cannot he really can't stay in the game if that bishop sits there too much longer. He takes. And again presses forward with f5. But what about queen c5 check? Well, if he plays queen c5 check, white can just play play a nice calm very favorable end game. with black split pawns probably one of them will fall and white can also play king h1 and uh, after queen takes f5 he can go into a good end game this way or he can play queen e3 and try to work on black's dark squares I, I think white was certainly planning to play queen e3 here. now black should have taken that route but instead tried to fight back with d5, and after this, um, black has no chance. Queen e3, queen e5. So the bishop, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes f5, white's planning rook e3, and a decisive rook lev, there's really no adequate defense. So he tries queen c5 check here, and now knight g7, that was the big plan, hoping for pawn takes g6 or something along those lines but here white utilizes the very very important motif pins that's of course the most important tactical device you have in the game utilizing the pin pin double attack those are the uh, those are the big very big important attacking themes back rank mates but here white utilizes the pin, the d5 pawn is pinned and what does he do? Now he gets the knight on c3 which has been angling to get into play, jumps right forward with knight e4 and knight f6 check, that's a that's going to be a killer Zabersky goes on total defensive mode here with queen f8 now how to get at the h7 unit uh, Webb finds a very Constructive way to get at it. Actually, you'd be looking at moves like knight takes h7 here. Um, but yeah, black gets his pieces out. Then you'd be looking at moves like queen f4, threatening queen h6. And that, that's the move you would definitely come up with. And now black, there's no other way outside uh, to avert disaster. Bishop takes f5, loses instantly. Knight takes f5, loses the queen, rook e8. So all there is left is queen d8. And now, well, look at those violent forcing moves. So here, here's the main forcing move. If you calculate just a couple moves, you'll see the mate. There's the mate. 
must take the night. Boom, check, and make. Nice little example. Okay. So also, White was willing to go into a very, you know, far superior endgame to prosecute the attack. Uh, 